Hello and welcome back to the Football Parliament podcast, a one-stop destination for all your football debates, opinions and discussions. And today on the panel, I have Palash and Vedant as we discuss the fate of Manchester United. First of all, we all know how badly or how cruelly Liverpool dismantled Manchester United 5-0. So, first of all, I'll ask Palash. Palash, what were your reviews of the game? I think uh, as Jamie Gallagher quite correctly pointed out after the game, this was probably Liverpool's biggest opportunity of actually getting a very, very dominant victory over Manchester United. The scoreline is dominant for sure, but even so, the matter, uh, the manner of the scoreline, I'm sorry. And uh, even, I think it was 5-0 by like 50-55 minutes in the last 35 minutes or so, Manchester uh, Liverpool could have easily added like two to three goals with being a man up. So, a performance like this at home against better rivals Liverpool, totally unacceptable. And I completely understand the frustration on part of all United fans right now. And definitely, like moving on to the major point of the discussion was Ole in or Ole out. As things have proceeded in the few in the last few hours, we can see is that Ole might be given the opportunity to be the manager in the next three big games. That includes Spurs, City, and Atlanta in the Champions League. Vidant. As you have been following Manchester United this season, what do you feel? How is Ole the perfect uh, person to lead Manchester United or uh, he should be out? In my opinion, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has to be out because if you've seen United very closely, they're not organized defensively or in general in the game. They don't press well and that is something a manager is supposed to get the thing right or get the thing sorted, which hasn't happened so far. And as you said, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has three games to prove that he is, he can be Man United's boss and can lead them to glory. Let's see what happens because Man City won't stop them. Uh, Man City won't spare them. Sorry, my bad. But Man City but, won't spare them. They might get a result against Atlanta or Tottenham, but Man City won't spare them. I'm pretty sure about it. But we all but you know, know this is actually. Uh, if I want to add, this is actually kind of disappointing uh, from the Manchester board, according to me, because. Uh, isn't this the cycle what's been happening since like half a season now? It's always this buffer period that's been granted to Ole to prove his worth, to save his job. And that's when, you know, these players actually step up and the results start coming. But then again, after this uh, phase is gone, when Ole is kind of secured at the job, again, the results start downflowing. And this has been the cycle through and on throughout. Uh, I'm pretty confident that if such a performance, such results with the quality of squad, you could see at a club like Chelsea with the impatient board or you could say success-minded board. Ole wouldn't have uh, survived this job even this far. And I definitely feel that uh, irrespective of all good that he's done to Manchester United, bringing stability into the club, uh, balancing things, developing a good squad, it's the correct time for Ole to leave now. Definitely. like and I agree with you. Definitely, Palash. Also, just adding one more point, tiny point, that Manchester United board, in my opinion, just don't care about what's happening in the club. They're okay with them finishing fourth in the Premier League or not winning a trophy. They just don't care. They just care about the money which they earn from Manchester United. I mean, let's just talk about Chelsea and Real Madrid. They are, they are the clubs we support. Real Madrid in 2018-19 went trophyless and immediately Perez spent 300 million in the transfer window. Not saying that United didn't spend, but that was after the fans completely lost it with no signings or after them not being able to get Sancho after a couple of times. Even same goes for Chelsea. As soon as the transfer ban was left up, uh, Chelsea's board came up with a lot of signings. Werner, Havertz, etc. Et so, I just don't know about what's with Manchester United's board. Maybe I do not agree on the fact that they do not spend or they do not care about that because things became very sudden for them when things started to happen for them because uh, we all know Glazers were in India were fighting for a uh, team in India in the Indian Premier League the same day their team was trashed. So, the decision-making was very cruel to them to be uh, asked in just a day or something. But definitely, Ole's thing is interesting for me right now. But first of all, if Ole does not... If, if it is the last phase of Ole if uh, that the fans are expecting, who do you feel that uh, a person who could replace Ole could be perfect. Two, uh, two to three names that I can name right now are Eric Ten Hag, Antonio Conte, and Zidane. But I have my reasons for pros and cons of both them, of all three managers. Uh, Palash, why don't you start over there? I think uh, the three names that you have listed are actually great, great names. Two of them are unemployed in Antonio Conte and Zinedine Zidane. Both of these managers have proven themselves 
Zidane has more than proven that he can uh, manage a team with uh, superstars and lead them to European glory. On the other hand, Antonio Conte has proven himself at uh, Inter Milan, at uh, Chelsea, at Juventus that he can take over teams which are in a rebuild phase, uh, develop them. Chelsea finished 10th in the previous season. Antonio Conte led them to uh, first Premier League title in his first season itself in management and also won the FA Cup next season. So, with Antonio Conte, I think Manchester United do get something that they've been starving for since four long years, which is trophies. And uh, their league performances are sure to be better. But well, uh, well, biggest... I'd like to defer you on Antonio Conte because, see, uh, whenever right. I have seen Antonio Conte, he has managed three major clubs uh, in the time I have been seeing him. And all the time, three times he has been playing, he has gone with a back three with the wing backs, uh, wing backs going forward. That means compromising your front three or the attacking forwards, mostly the wide, wide forwards. And that is the problem that uh, Manchester United has. It has too many wide forwards that you cannot bench. You cannot bench a Jadon Sancho. You cannot bench a Greenwood. You cannot bench a uh, Marcus Rashford. And also, he needs to uh, he needs striker who have a very good work rate. You like uh, you know uh, person like Lukaku who had been working hard to develop his game under Antonio Conte and finally yeah. get the goals that he uh, strives. A person like Diego Costa. Do you feel that at the age of 36, uh, Ronaldo will be able to fill in that? That is the no, actually, point I would say. Yeah. You've made great points and that's where I was coming to. I was just listening to pros. I think the biggest cons is that Manchester United are such a long-term oriented club. Um, just a minute. I was saying that Manchester United are such a long-term oriented club that uh, they can't just sacrifice their price assets like uh, Jadon Sancho or Marcus Rashford just because of uh, Antonio Conte's short-term future because he also has a history with falling out with boards. So, Antonio Conte is not the best option for me as well, I'll be honest. Uh, looking at the other options, Zinedine Zidane, I think Zidane has, uh, according to some reports, stated that he's not exactly interested in the United job. Uh, I don't know how yeah. true that is. Yeah. And the biggest flaw with uh, Eric Tan Hag is that he is currently employed at Ajax and they've had a great start to the season. They are uh, on top of Eredivisie. I think they're top of the UCL group as well. They've just conceded two goals and scored 37. That's actually the most goals conceded in uh, European top 10 leagues and the least, uh, sorry, most goals scored and the least conceded. So, uh, this could be one problem with Ten Hag also that he's not proven himself in a top 5 league. But I think either of the three options would be better than Ole right now for Manchester United. As simple as that. But, but according to me, I completely I agree with you, Parash. Yeah. I'll, I'll but the thing with Eric Ten Hag is... Conte is the only choice that they have right now and I do not know if... With this squad, they are ready to go with that. Because if Antonio Conte is coming right now, in a month or two in the January transfer window, you will have to spend, uh, spend a lot. Because you do not have a right wing back who can actually play the Antonio Conte style. As me and Palash definitely know, we have seen him at Chelsea. And you do not have that one man that he had. And Conte at uh, Chelsea, uh, Brozovic at uh, Inter Milan, or a Matic uh, uh, at Chelsea the uh, time before. So you do not have that person who can rule the midfield which Antonio Conte wants and loves to uh, have a player like that. So, definitely, he might go for a play, a big player, but I do not know if Blazers are ready to spend in the January and still and then hope for a, a great results. For sure. Uh, one very good point that you developed was that he does not have a Conte or Bros, which kind of player, which is United's biggest problem as well. So, now, if Antonio Conte does wish to play a, a pivot with or something like Pogba, Fernandez, or a defensive-minded player. That particular defensive-minded player is someone like a Fred or a McTominay or Matic right now. None of them are good enough. Talking about the right wing-back position that he touched upon, I personally, with Antonio Conte, don't have as many doubts with that because he's known to develop players who weren't particularly wing-backs, who were developed into wing-backs. So, someone, I, like, I a, tell you, I tell so you someone like... So, tell you. Someone like a Diego Dallo, who's known for his uh, attacking instincts. Someone like probably converting Sancho to a wing-back who has played as a wide midfielder at times. I'm not saying this looks like very rough and vague on idea right now, but with Antonio Conte, yes, there are multiple flaws that come with his uh, three at the back formation, for sure. Yeah, I think that will be the final verdict from all of us. Uh, before ending the video, I'll ask both Vedanta and you to go for your final verdict that what as a Premier League fan or as a Manchester United Lover, what uh, one should expect uh, out of the uh, team, Vedant? I feel that Manchester United 
are going to get spanked by man city let's be honest man city are in their in great form even without a striker plus they might get results against atlanta and tottenham but to be honest the spanking by man city that that's definitely going to be the way for ole to get out of the club and probably the best fit is conte because conte is premier league proven zidane doesn't even know english right now and probably maybe the players which uh, are currently in man united they are favoring zidane system because zidane needs two inside forwards and united have that greenwood rashford ronaldo etc etc to uh, you know play like uh, so in zidane, his system but it, i think zidane, conte will be the better option zidane or conte the person palash your final word it in just a minute oh my final verdict is ole should stay because i'm a chelsea fan <laughs> <laughs> but no no if if i was a manchester united fan the first thing that i would be wanting is ole to step down respectfully because i won't just ignore whatever he's done for my club he's been great and uh, secondly i would want either of the three as we've named i think all three are great managers all three come with cons you can't just say that this manager is the better one as a uh, Vidan mentioned right now, Zidane does not know English, so there is a language barrier there as well. How much attaining Zidane would be possible? How much attaining Ten Hag would be possible? One expressing his desire not to be interested in the job, and other one being currently employed. So I think looking at all of this, maybe the best option could be uh, Antonio Conte, or maybe maybe he could just look at other options like um, or maybe Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> maybe brendan rogers who's been great but then uh, another call with rogers is that he is an ex liverpool manager and he is currently employed as well at the moment uh, it's not too easy for manchester united they aren't like chelsea they think about the long term future they don't want a manager who will be there for a season or two and get them a trophy or two they want someone to bring uh, to build their long term future on and i think this is the reason uh, behind the delay in their judgment regarding the whole situation. Oh, you have heard us on the Football Parliament podcast. What are our views on Manchester United? Do let us know. Uh, do, do let us are uh, your views on the Manchester United team in the comment section below. This is from us. Thank you so much, guys. Ole is not a manager. He's just vibes.